Every time I got out of jail, I got higher. I got out of jail the last time in September 2016, and I overdosed the next day and almost died. And that's when I decided my life had to change. from a group called uh, Voices from Inside, <laughs> and Voices Inside is a writing program for women who are incarcerated, women who have been previously incarcerated, and women in recovery. Yeah. Nearly 80% of us were mothers living with our children when we were incarcerated. We accepted guilty plea bargains in 97% of our cases due to poor legal representation. 86% of us have experienced sexual violence much of which happened in childhood. 82% of us were in jail for nonviolent offenses. 82% of us are drug or alcohol dependent or are abusers. So the class was about the prison system and so we're taking the class and now we have real people from the prison system coming in to tell us their real experiences. So after spending seven months with no contact, in any way, shape, or form with my family. I got out of jail on December 21st with nowhere to go. So, but it was a very difficult walking out of jail and not having anybody to call. Mm -hmm. Like nobody, except your dealer. Yep. <laughs> and I struggled being over Christmas in a, in a shelter in Springfield. And it's yeah. deep, it's, it's hard to listen to sometimes, it's hard to get into. My mom was a, a drug addict, and I didn't know that, and I didn't realize that till later on in my life. Um, like I said, I, I dropped out at 12 years old out of school. My, my, my mom didn't drop me off nowhere. She just, we lived in the same house, but she left me in the same house. There was five other siblings, so it wasn't just me. And so I turned to the street. I started selling drugs. I started using drugs. I started selling myself. At the age of 14, I done did so much stuff. I had older siblings and I was selling drugs and feeding me, my older siblings. I would have to buy us clothes and stuff like that, so. Oh, wow. It was a different variety of women. Um, I felt like they each had their different stories, but they all had the same solution. Like, they all wanted the same thing in result to be a better in life to recover, to never go back to jail and do right by their family. That's what a lot of it sound like. I made a lot of horrible decisions throughout my life, but I definitely would not go back and change a thing mm -hmm. because of who I am today mm -hmm. and the way I live my life and how I reflect it toward my relationships in my life with my kids, everything. Uh, I definitely wouldn't go back and change a thing. You know? um, I, I wasn't a, f a fan of them. Um, I felt that they went to jail and did all these crimes and hurt their families the most and that's unforgivable and I've been in an experience where I've been hurt by my own mother and by my own family so so them hurting their own kids and their own family and taking advantage of the things that they had it's I can't I can't respect a lot of the things that they've already done but I can't respect the changes that they've made and, and why they made them just to better themselves and better their family so as long as you're doing better, there's nothing to be better. They, they got along. My mom was an ex-drug user, and, by the way, and I basically traveled the same road she did. Only thing that I didn't do is get murdered like she did and uh, sell my kids. And I didn't have children at the young age she had me. Um, 
you can't get a lot of it back. They don't understand. You guys will never understand, I don't think. You just have to keep the faith and hope that, that everything turns out okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me and Chris had similar stories. So when I, I feel like we kind of touched them by telling them how, like, basically how our, their kids must feel with their parents doing that to them and then giving them some type of hope so they can recreate their relationships with their with their families. So uh, basically a one-on-one -on -one session with them and them giving us feedback and us giving them feedback and helping each other out. They basically, we both did the course. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go, yeah, we go. Yeah, so it does. It just it just reminds me of why I do this and why I need to keep doing this. And like I've said before, my life experiences are not just for me to experience. My life experiences are for me to tell it and let somebody else and help somebody else. You are to inspire all of us to be more confident and open up. By the way, so mm -hmm. thank you very much. And having those ladies whose choices have been made by other people and choices have been made by the situation they were in and the choices that, that were made when there was no other choice, um, it's like, it's, it puts me in a better position to understand that, that choices are, are a big thing and that this choice can mean I can land here and this choice means I can land all the way down here. They, they show me that, I guess. Yeah. So you can't judge me because of my life. You don't know what's behind the story of what I did or what I had to do. You know, yeah. and yeah, we need, like she said, we need that. We need you. We need the society not to look at us. Oh, you did this. You did that. No, no. There is change. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We're living proof. This one's hard. Yeah. Yeah. I was in jail for the third time, feeling more sorry for myself than sorry for the reasons I was in for. My mom, the center of my life, my best friend, wrote me words that probably hurt her as much as they hurt me. This was it. This was my last letter. Expect no visits, and there would be no commissary. She told me that I was not to call her when I got out. I was no longer welcome in her life. These words were the most powerful and serious things she's ever said. You could hear the despair in her letter. In reading that letter, I realized I had to change. They simply saw a homeless teenage girl who drank herself to deadness every day. What they didn't see were the images she was trying to erase from her mind. They simply saw a drug-addicted prostitute turning tricks to get the next day. What they didn't see was a woman self-medicating, mentally ill, suffering from trauma, trying to protect her inner child the only way she knew how. What they didn't see was a new student eager to learn, to make a difference in life, not only for herself, but for all women who struggle with trauma in her community. So now I can tell you what and who you will simply see. You will simply see me. I honestly struggle with poetry and then with them they made me feel like every word doesn't have to rhyme or doesn't it's not supposed to be perfect. So like some you could just say what you wanna say and it comes out like a story. I feel like when I'm in that room, every every word I write down was like deeper than it than it should have yeah. been. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I think deeper, but since they're in the room I'm just thinking more in me. More. Yeah, like they're they're giving us that that love, and I feel like I just want to show giving back that love. Yeah. Like, thank you guys for sharing your hard experiences. Because we're both mine. strangers. We're strangers to both of them, like yeah. to us, them, and, and them to us. So for them to, to just open up and tell us yeah. their experiences that they didn't even want to tell their children. That's the crazy part. That's the cool part. Just because I want to become a judge when I get older, and. Um, actually seeing, w wanting to work in the criminal justice system and seeing what the system is doing to criminals and want to change it all. Like that's basically what I got took out of this whole course. And I rewired my whole brain. Basically just how, how the prison is like basically subjected to for prisoners to come back in your life, it come back. It's not really helping them when they get out. There's and then people are like subjected once they get in all the laws as police like the we learn we learned about the mandatory laws and like three strikes laws and then um, plea bargains we all learn about all of that it's, it's 
making it seem like the system is corrupted or something. I, I didn't feel like that. I felt like there was a place that they helped us and they knew what was best for us and I should be following after them. And now I see that it's not all rainbows and sunshine and something got to be done. Okay. I laughed every chance I got. I had a couple of real goofy roommates, so we laughed together. As much as I hated jail, I loved that. I was always around someone I could laugh with. I discovered that my voice matters. I have the ability to choose my destiny. Broken and defeated for 30 years, I made the choice that I will not be broken no more. Life will not have its way with me. We conceive dreams, we give birth to them. We have to nurture them so they'll grow to its full potential. I gain a real life answer. Like my whole life you get stuff from books and teachers and stuff that people don't really experience and I got a real experience from people who do this like it's in prison every day and they just got out and they deal with the drug abuse and, and how hard it is. I never understood how hard it was to really break away from your family but still love them. So it kind of gave me kind of peace in my heart. I don't Wait, I'll hold it then. You're not going to the